All right, y'all, welcome to the Scott Horton Show. I'm the director of the Libertarian Institute, editorial director of Antiwar.com, author of the book Fool's Errand, Time to End the War in Afghanistan, and the brand new Enough Already, Time to End the War on Terrorism. And I've recorded more than 5,500 interviews since 2003, almost all on foreign policy and all available for you at scotthorton.org. You can sign up for the podcast feed there. And the full interview archive is also available at youtube.com slash Scott Horton Show. All right, y'all. Introducing Nasser Arabi, a reporter out of Sana'a, Yemen. And he runs uh, Yemen Alan. That's Yemen Now. And uh, he's been reporting on, uh, of course, the war, and but on this show for the entirety of the war since 2015. Welcome back to the show, Nasser. How are you doing, sir? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, yeah, happy to have you again. So just give us an update. Uh, I guess start with the ceasefire, the negotiations, uh, where things stand with the blockade and all the rest on the ground there in Yemen, if you could, please, sir. Well, it's, it's um, the truth has been holding for about six months now, and this has never happened before. It's uh, uh, the, the truce uh, started in April for two months, and then it was renewed for two more months, and then it was renewed also for two months. Now the last two months are about to end. It would expire on October 2, but I think uh, it's going also, uh, most likely, it's going to be extended and uh, expanded for six months now. I think this is what uh, everybody or uh, a lot of people expect. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Blinken was with the, with the president in New York, with the Yemeni president, Rashid al-Alimi, and uh, they talked about this and the importance of extending and expanding the truce for uh, six months and after that for uh, for a permanent ceasefire and a permanent armistice and this is uh, something uh, that is very very expected to happen because in my opinion all parties uh, to this war and to this conflict especially Saudi Arabia, now are willing, very willing, to end this war after eight years of destruction and the killing um, um, uh, without any point. So this is the summary of where things stand now. All right. Now, listen, so... I was talking with Hassan Al Tayeb, and he was telling me that the uh, fuel shipments are still being held up by the Saudis to a great degree, and that that's still really hurting the humanitarian situation. Is that right? No, this is not right. Yes, the Saudis are using the fuel as a as a bargaining chip. This is for sure, as it has been the case for. For the for the eight for the eight years, but now it's the uh, Saudi Arabia tried very quickly, very quickly tried to stop the fuel for some time for days for a few days, but quickly it released them uh, because uh, it uh, Saudi Arabia does not want to come to the violence it does not want to come to to come back to the to the war it is uh, very clear and uh, this is what i am observing um, but of course houthi in sanaa he said this recently he said that saudi arabia was holding up the the fuel uh, and he said okay we uh, he, he said in a in a in a threatening way uh, but uh, Saudi Arabia released them and uh, they just blamed Houthi for uh, these things and they denied this. So 
I want to say that Saudi Arabia is using the fuel as a bargaining chip, but it is not willing now anymore to hold up the fuel as it was in the past. No. No, oh, that's good to hear. Um, and then, so overall, is the humanitarian situation really looking up in terms of, you know, uh, food distribution and, and medical care and all that kind of thing? Yes, it's it's much, much better, much better than it was. Of course, the problem is still there, uh, but it's much better. I'm saying it's much better than it was. Now, the, 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 you, you can... You can take your your uh, gas any in any station easily. Um, um, uh, also, the the food stuffs and the um, uh, also the commercial things and uh, many things. Yes, but it doesn't mean that everything is normal, of course. But it's much better if we talk about the amount that is that is allowed that is that is being allowed in, that is entering Yemen, it's much, uh, much more than it was. And <clears throat> uh, 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 people get their, uh, what they need uh, uh, much easier than they used to be. Uh, the, the people who want to, to travel now, they can travel outside Yemen through the airport of Sana'a. Uh, um, um, easier than than it was, of course. I I am not saying it's normal, but uh, there are flights to Jordan still uh, until now, and uh, uh, also the uh, the 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 movement in the in the in the, in the country, uh, all over the country is okay for the for the people, the uh, c- civilians, um, and also the. Um, uh, the, the the aids the aids are being distributed uh, everywhere um, uh, much better than 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 they than this was and this is what the organizations are saying now of course but there are still problems of course they want to uh, the, the most important problems now uh, for this in particular for this uh, expansion and extension i told you about that could happen nowadays. That was today, tomorrow, after tomorrow, because the end, the 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 the, the deadline is is to October. So they are talking. Mm-hmm. They are talking now. The Yemenis, the the Yemeni government, the international recognized government, and the Houthis are talking all the time now. And uh, U.S. is uh, is uh, very involved, uh, as I told you, uh, Blinken. Um, uh, was yesterday with the president in New York talking about this. Uh, so they want to expand it, mm-hmm. to expand it, and for six months. But on what basis? Of course, on new basis. That's um, that's on on, uh, on 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 three things. The most important uh, of these things are the the salaries. This time. Salaries must be paid for the for every for everyone because uh, thousands and thousands of uh, uh, Yemenis have been working without uh, being paid for eight years now. Now uh, the, the salary is going to be paid. Number one and number two is the the flights are going to be more more destinations. More and more destinations, not only to to Jordan and Cairo, but all the other uh, countries, and also the roads, the roads in Taiz and other cities uh, inside Yemen uh, should be opened and must be opened. Uh, this is the three things: so roads must be opened, uh, and uh, flights must be more. And also, uh, the salaries must be paid. If these things are agreed upon, I think uh, it would be expanded and extended, not only to six months, but to a permanent ceasefire 
and this is what is likely uh, what is highly likely to happen that's really uh, great to hear as i think that's really great now so when the saudis renounced uh their goal yes. of reinstalling hadi in power and instead appointed this ruling council uh who all is that made up of and, and when you say the negotiations are going on between the former government and the houthis and the americans what about this council of saudi puppets are they part of it all too no, the, the chairman of the council, the chairman of the council is now in New York, attending the I got you. UN General Assembly. He's the guy meeting he, with Blinken. He that met. You're uh, about. He met. Uh, yes, Blinken yesterday, and they talked about it. And uh, the U.S. State Department issued a statement on this, saying that uh, the the ex the extension and expansion of the truce is is going to happen or must at least must happen uh -huh. um so uh, united states is is very concerned about qaeda qaeda is coming back so they they know very well because um, you know uh, 300 uh, i mean uh, 30 soldiers were killed last week by al qaeda and they know what 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 it means not to not to extend and expand the the truce because Qaeda is coming back and Qaeda is, is taking advantage of all these things of the chaos in the south. Yeah, I was reading about the uh, Southern Transitional Council, which is also supported by the UAE, is now in a major fight with Al Qaeda down there in the south, right? Is that UAE yes, versus it's, UAE? It's, you know, it's um, they they. Um, um, Yes, it's uh, you know it's supported by UAE, and uh, it's uh, fighting the Islah, and Islah is the you know Islah is the the main the main party that is fighting Houthi, the main party. But uh, unfortunately, Islah is the the brotherhood. I mean, uh, is um, you know is being fought, uh, is being disliked by Houthi by UAE and by Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, so um, uh, this is why it's uh, uh, the the expansion and uh, to agree with uh, Houthi would uh, would settle things down would uh, would 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 solve a lot of problems and uh, would uh, let you know where you are and where are you standing at least. But otherwise, um, uh, Houthi is uh, getting stronger and stronger and. Um, uh, they are uh, getting more uh, divisive and uh, uh, more violence and uh, um, chaos in the south. And uh, no, uh, they, they, they do nothing. This is this is what everybody knows about them. Hmm. Well, you know when um, the Al Qaeda guys grew up to be a powerful force in the Second Iraq War. It turned out it was the locals who stabbed them in the back and got rid of them. It wasn't the American effort. It was the local Sunnis, really, who stopped them. And I wonder whether you think if we had a real end to the war here and a peace between all factions except al-Qaeda, whether they would remain a powerful faction. I guess, you know, they're the bulk of the Giants Brigade now, right? Are they going to be, you know, 10 times more powerful than they ever were before? Or are they going to end up fading away or back to where they were before? Well, it depends, you know. It depends on how this, how they're going to agree. Because if they are serious about making peace and about um, uh, letting Yemenis um, uh, build up and um, uh, the, their country and uh, reconstruct it, and uh, I think Kaido is going to. To, to, to fade away because uh, nobody now uh, I mean nobody wants to, 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 to live in violence and in terrorism all the time uh, but Al Qaeda is only uh, uh, prospering uh, only when there is uh, violence and chaos and there is no uh, state there is uh, when in lawlessness it's only uh, it likes the lawlessness and uh, non-state, uh, this is what Al-Qaeda wants.
and uh, but if there is uh, if there is a good uh, state if there is a unified yemen i think uh, qaeda will will uh, will get uh, weaker and weaker because now people are fed up uh, of the wars and uh, the violence and the uh, uh, devastation hang on just one second hey y'all they've got great deals on weed at the hempspot.com the hemp spot specializes in delta 8 tetrahydrocannabinol instead of Delta-9, so they can send it straight to you anywhere in America. Recently, a friend moved and didn't have a guy in his new town, but then he heard about thehempspot.com on my show and was saved, figuratively and literally, because if you use the promo code SCOTT, you get 15% off every order and free shipping on any order over $100. Legal jams, bud, gummies, and the rest in your state. Thehempspot.com. Spell V. THC. You guys, my friend Mike Swanson has written such a great revisionist take on the early history of the post World War II national security state and military industrial complex in the Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy years. It's called The War State. I have to say, it's the most convincing case I've read that Kennedy had truly decided to end the Cold War before he was killed. In any case, I know you'll love it. The War State by Mike Swanson. Yeah, well, it sure has been a lot of years of war. As, you know, we've talked about before, you covered the previous war, 2009 through 15, for the New York Times. And then as soon as America switched sides in the war, they quit asking you about it. (laughs) But um, so, you know, hopefully, um, you know, this will be the end. We won't just be switching sides back again and now having to fight a war against al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula forever, uh, but instead, you know, can figure out a way to just negotiate peace there uh, after, what, 13 years of this? I think, you know, it's... it's, it's um, I think the key thing is in the hand of Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince. He, he now... Uh, realizes and he understands that um, <clears throat> um, that um, um, he will not be in safe um, uh, environment or his country and his uh, oil and his uh, borders with Yemen will not be safe uh, until uh, until he. Uh, uh, reconciles with uh, with the uh, with the Houthis, um, or in a way or another, uh, because uh, and this is what is happening. Of course, they they have been talking uh, for 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 three or four months now in uh, in, uh, in in Oman, uh, Houthis and Saudis, because Saudi Arabia will uh, will not uh, rely on anyone except Houthi. Uh, when it comes to its uh, security and the security of its borders. And uh, of course, because the, uh, the others can't do anything. Houthis now uh, have shown their strength and they, they did uh, two uh, huge parades uh, this week uh, in Sana'a and in Hudayda. This week and last week. And uh, next week they're going to make the maybe the biggest, the grandest one here in Sana'a, and they're showing their uh, strength, they're showing their um, weapons, their uh, forces, um, whether uh, navy or air force or or uh, other troops. So uh, uh, everybody knows that Houthi has been. Um, uh, take advantage of this uh, truce, and uh, he's preparing uh, to 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 continue uh, fighting because because it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's his, it's uh, his field, a uh, good field. Uh, he's he's what he's good. He's what he's best at. This is what Houthi is best at. If you want to come, if Saudis want to come back to fight, Houthi will be very happy. He has no problem with these things at all. Hmm. But if it comes now to to end the war, end the war and come back to peace, 
and uh, respect Yemenis and their uh, government and their state. I think it's easy, and uh, they can do it easily. And uh, um, uh, the security of Saudi Arabia, the biggest concern, will be good if they agreed with Houthi. This is very clear. There is no need to uh, uh, exaggeration or or overstating about these things because Houthi can secure Saudi Arabia uh, borders. The others can't. This is what should be clear. Uh, Nasser, what's this stuff I'm reading about the French Foreign Legion showing up to see some oil fields or oil wells or something? This is um, uh, the French people have been working in uh, in a in a liquid gas yes, plant uh, in a liquid gas yes, uh, harbor here in in uh, in Yemen for a very long time before the war. And uh, when Al Qaeda came back to the south, they came to uh, to stand yards to 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 protect it uh, and this is uh, this is this is uh, this is also something that that tells you very clearly that the, the the people in the south can't do anything can't protect anything they can't protect gas they can't protect oil they can Qaeda will come why because the south are very divided people very divided and very you know they have no um, heads. They have no someone uh, who can uh, bring them, uh, who, uh, who can unite them, or who can uh, bring them to unity or bring them together. They they have no one. So uh, in every uh, district, in every city, in every province, you have factions here or there. They are fighting each other and killing each other. And the Qaeda is. Uh, is feeding this and supporting this. So this is why the French people came. They came to protect their or their work, let me say, or the 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 the, the gas of of uh, the gas that the French people want now because they were very worried about what's going on in in Ukraine and uh, in the world, and so they want to secure some oil and some gas from Yemen, and this is why they came to protect. Because they were afraid that Al Qaeda can can take it. Take, of course, the Al Qaeda can can uh, can take it easily. Uh, this is why they came. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, you know how much of a monster this war has created. If bombing them only made them more powerful before, then switching sides to outright backing them. <laughs> probably make them even more powerful than that. So I'm afraid you're going to have uh, AQAP and its offshoots. And... Houthi now, by the way, Houthi now is um, showing <clears throat> uh, showing helicopters in the sky of Sana'a for the first time, <clears throat> for the first time, of course, and because uh, Saudis have thought that they destroyed all the airplanes and all the helicopters, but Houthi now, while he is doing the, his parades here in Sana'a, they are showing helicopters. Mm -hmm. And maybe this week they are going to show more than helicopters. Maybe fighter jets. Uh, let's uh, wait and see. Because mm -hmm. they, they were able to hide them someplace. And now they are, showing, they are, they are flying with them in the sky of Sana'a because there is a truce. And uh, uh, Saudi Arabia would not do anything because they know what it means. It means uh, they would strike back. So Houthis would strike back, and they can strike back now to the to the Saudi cities. <laughs> they know. Um, well, so uh, on the American side of the equation here, there's war powers resolutions again in both houses of Congress, as I'm sure you know. And there's a massive campaign by peace groups, left, right, and libertarian, to try to push these things through right now. And so um, I guess it's important that 
the message is that we're supporting diplomatic efforts ongoing. It's really good to hear that the Biden administration is not obstructing this, but they're really helping the UN and whoever else. Exactly, to here. exactly, exactly. The organizations, organizations, and Congress are doing very well, and they are exerting great efforts to help uh, to help end the war, not only to ex to extend and expand the the truce, because they they saw. They saw what it means to 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 hold the uh, uh, to to stop the ceasefire and to 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 stop the fighting. They they saw a lot of uh, results. They saw a lot of fruits. So um, uh, they are supporting them. Of course, they, they've been supporting, especially the people in the Congress. I mean, people from the from uh, from both aisles, from the from the two parties. Um, and they are supporting because they know that uh, continuation of the war is only in the in the favor of Al Qaeda. Right. Uh, well, got that right, and has been this whole time. And that's you know an important message for people contacting Congress about this right now is that this war really has benefited some extremely dangerous guys, and we've seen who they are in the past. And I'm sure not supporting war against them. I sure as hell ain't supporting war for him, you know? So, God dang, we got to wrap this thing up right now. I, 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 think, I think things are, are going well now. And um, uh, I'm very optimistic now because uh, I'm seeing a lot of things happening on the ground. Um, and uh, uh, people also, people now, um, uh, Saudis in particular and the United Arab Emirates are very convinced that uh, it's pointless and uh, senseless war so um, they want to end it as soon as possible yeah alright well listen thank you so much for coming on the show and it's really great to hear some good news from you for a change here so uh, really appreciate it Nasser thank you very much for um, for having me and uh, thank you very much for also, your interest in Yemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Talk to you again soon. The Scott Horton Show, Anti War Radio, can be heard on KPFK 90.7 FM in LA, APSradio.com, antiwar.com, scotthorton.org, and libertarianinstitute.org.